You're either new to fabricating or trying to fix rust, it's quite daunting and some of the videos online are quite extensive. But we've completely cut up the back, there's a different engine going in the back. Welcome back to KM Builds. If you're new to this channel, this is our 1986 Honda Acti, which is a K-Truck, and we are putting a Honda Fireblade motorbike engine in. We're also just finished bolting on a MX-5 rear subframe, so make sure you go and check out some of our other videos if you're interested in seeing this build. But today's video is a little bit different. So the chances are you're here because you're either new to fabricating or trying to fix rust or you would like to have a go at it yourself. And if it was anything like me when I was starting to have a look at tackling this truck, it's quite daunting and some of the videos online are quite extensive. Also, a lot of these videos online, these people have a lot of advanced tools. Metal stretchers, metal shrinkers, a lot of cutting tools, metal formers. There's a lot of things which you could have but are very expensive. So the purpose of today's video is to try and give you an insight as to how we tackle rust with the most advanced tool being a welder as you can't really tackle rust without having a welder. But we aim to show you how we approach uh, rust repair and all the basic tools that we use. We've come to a point where we have a gaping hole in the one pillar of our truck. So we thought it was a perfect opportunity to show you and go through the steps that we take in order to repair it. So let me show you the damage. So overall, our truck is fairly good. There's a few areas that we go on to repair, but the major part is this. It may look worse than it is, but when you break it down, it's not as bad as it actually looks. So when we come across a piece like this, we like to step back and first look and determine how we're going to approach this repair. You have to determine if it's structural or a cosmetic repair. If it's structural, obviously you have to be more particular and make sure everything is done perfectly. If it's cosmetic, then a lot of the time you can cut out and just replace it and as long as it looks good, then that's all that matters because it doesn't add much structural integrity to the chassis. But this one, as you can see, is fairly structural. So we have to make sure we're doing this good. The next thing you have to do is determine how the area is made up of multiple panels. All of these cars and trucks are all made up of hundreds and hundreds of different panels spot welded together in order to create a chassis. So for this repair, we found there's one piece here. This is gonna be repaired in another video. The main purpose of the video is this repair here. So as you can see, there's one panel which goes all the way underneath this, and that is this section in here, which is not too bad. The only other panel then is this. So if we take a look at the inside, the panel that you can see here wraps around and finishes just where my finger is here and comes all the way up, up and around here. So in an ideal world, you would remove the whole panel and replace the whole panel. But in our scenario, one, it's going to be really hard to find a panel to replace that. And two, is a lot of work for what needs doing. And for our purpose of the truck, you know, we want to maybe drift this one day. So as long as it's structurally sound, the inside of there, not many people are going to see it. So if it doesn't, if you can see the weld or you can see the repair, it's not too bad. As long as it's structurally sound is our main purpose. So our plan is to essentially remove this whole piece roughly where the green marker is marked out. And when you really look at it, you can start to see how these panels are made up. As you can see, this bit I've just lifted here is attached to here. And this does run all the way up the side. So what you may end up doing is cutting inside here to break this panel separate from this. So let me just remove what I can of this one top layer, which is this, this, this section here, and as I said earlier, all the way up to that piece there. Let me get that removed and it might make more sense and be more clear for you. So unfortunately with a lot of rust repairs, you don't really know the extent of the rust until you start removing panels and that's probably the most daunting thing for most people. But now I've removed half of the panel, you can now start to see how straightforward it really is sometimes and how you can just dismantle it and see that it's not really made up of many panels. So all I've removed really is one simple panel. This piece here folded round, came across here, across there, and then this section here continued on around here. So even though there's rusty here, what we're gonna do is just grind all that down, treat the rust, same as inside there. Um, we're gonna try and get some uh, rust treatment up inside there as well. But generally, the rest of the uh, truck other than that top layer is fairly good. Like this here, I can see that it's uh, rusted through a little bit more on the other side, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove this side, continue that on there, as it will make even more sense. So 
So as I said previously, until you remove some of the panels, you can't actually see how extensive the rust is. Um, we've removed a few more pieces now and the rust is a little bit worse than we expected, but we do have a plan to fix it. So our plan was that where this panel carries on, we were hoping we could just replace this panel, which comes all the way around here, all the way around and it covers up all this section. Whether or not we would have done that in one piece is a different story. But as you can see in this hole now, this has actually rusted a little bit more. This hole is meant to be here. It's supposed to finish just with my fingers there, but it has rusted on the inside. The piece covering that hole there now is a completely another piece of metal which runs all the way up there. This is a fairly hard piece to uh, recreate without no enough tools. So what the plan is, is I think I'm just going to cut across there and down and then I can repair this panel to this section, which is a lot flatter. And that allows me access to the inside of here so I can repair the inside of this pillar. There are tools which will make this a lot easier. If I had the right tools, I'd be able to make that panel I've just showed you, which I'm going to cut up now. But as I don't have the tools, you don't necessarily need to remove the panel. And then that also leads on to, it depends on what kind of repair you're looking for. If this truck was worth a fortune and we were looking to re restore it back to its factory self, then we would probably remove all of it and put new panels on if you could find panels. But we've completely cut up the back. There's a different engine going in the back. So it's not like this is going back to its factory self. So it depends on what kind of repair you're looking for. I would probably say that if you were looking to get a completely factory finish, then it's probably worth paying someone else to do it. But if you're here for the DIY, DIY job then see what you can do see what you can remove and make it look as good as possible but also structurally sound so I'm going to remove that piece now and once it's all gone and then we're ready to start actually fixing this I'll show you what it looks like and now you can see that we have the full access to the end of this rust here so the first plan of attack is to repair that inner um, rail that you can't see when all of the panels are back together something like that it doesn't really matter on the inside how it looks at all so I can probably going to just do a complete 90 degree folded piece of material which will basically remove down to the bottom there weld and across remove as much of this existing rust as possible I may come back to here and then drill my own holes later on but the plan is to now first attack is remove this section here and just repair that inner rail I've also give it a bit of a wire wheel over just to double check everything and I also found another issue so the panel you've seen earlier that comes down here and wraps around this corner actually covers up a lot of this section but while wire wheeling it up I could see that inside here is a bit more damaged than expected and it looks like it's been fillered because it was full of uh, lots of little bits of filler so what I'm also gonna have to do is basically cut out this section here now and then weld that in before I put this panel on once I've cut that little section out that we've just found what I'm gonna do is we have this which is the buzz welds rust encapsulator this stuff is supposed to be amazing it's supposed to paint it straight over rust I've cleaned most of it off but you can paint this directly onto rusty parts and it's supposed to stop them rusting any further the plan with this is what I'm gonna do is the areas I can now see inside the chassis rails I'm gonna give it a good coat give all the areas you don't have access to once all the panels are repaired this does take a little while to dry so I'm gonna cut that piece out paint a bit of this on and give it a bit of time to dry this section is now cut, now cut out ready for a new piece and the inside rail is ready as you can see there is some underneath the truck which will be repaired that'll be in a later video um, so make sure you subscribe and go check that out but we can access that section in there from underneath so the plan now is to cut a piece for that rail there and get the inside rail repaired so what I'm going to do for that is a simple trick is to lie some masking tape on the area that you want to repair and then you can can draw on the masking tape the shape of the cutout that you have you can then lie the masking tape flat on the piece of metal which you have we have 1.25 mil sheet metal lie the masking tape on and cut around the shape that you've created and then you can weld and shape that to the piece that you have inside the truck So this is the shape I want. I'm going to do the uh, repair in two sections as further down into the hole, the bit that's more into there is a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is repair this piece and then I'll repair the little section on the inside. But I'm going to cut this piece out and get this into shape ready for us to weld in. But before I do any of that next, what I'm going to do now is paint all the areas that I can't access with the rust encapsulator from Buzzweld. So 
So as this is a bit of a guide but on basic tools and a bit of a budget, I'm just going to show you the difference of sometimes having some slightly better tools than others. So this piece here is the piece which will be going in there. And what I've done is, is one side is cut with the angle grinder, which is the left hand side there. And the other side I used the metal cutters. So they only cost probably less than £10. Angle grinders can cost up to like £1,500. We have an angle grinder, so we do both. But I'm just showing you the difference of both. As you can see, the metal cutters do work. They do cut a fairly straight line. But you are left with some imperfections, which I can easily get out with just hammering that against the floor and flattening out them little dents. But it just goes to show how you don't need all the tools in order to do it. So what I'm gonna do now is shape this into shape for that piece there. So this panel is just squeezed into place. What you wanna do is get it to roughly where it's the right size and then just trim everything so you've just about, as you can see, I trimmed a little bit too much there, but we can fill that with weld. It is held in there pretty snug on its own. So you know it fits pretty well and it's not gonna take much work to get that welded in. As you can see as well, I've kind of got the shape of the panel, but that will come more when basically you tack weld here, make sure it's flush and move your way up the panel so that the shape of the panel continues on as it should. On getting these pieces to the right size of what you want to repair, a bit of a trick is just to take your time, take a little bit off at a time, try it again, see if it fits, take a bit more off, f uh, file, sand, whatever you want to do. You can take material off the piece you've cut, you can trim bits here and there off the car or the truck or whatever you have and just get them to fit almost perfectly. And if they can hold in place like that one does there, you know you've done a pretty good job. So just to show you the piece that's going on the inside rail is it was a flat piece. And as you can see, I've kind of bent. It doesn't really matter that I've kind of damaged it because you can't see this at all once we've finished it all up. And I've kind of got a rough shape using a hammer, piece of wood, pliers, and anything you can have just to roughly shape it. So I'm just going to use a magnet to hold it and show you how this is going to fit. As you can see there, it's basically going to tack weld there and tack weld on the inside rail. That bottom left corner there, I need to fill that with weld. But as you can see, this rail is pretty much done once it's welded. And then I'm going to try and shape that inside bit and fill all of this section with some more metal. But the two pieces are pretty much ready to be tacked into place. When tacking your pieces into place, take your time, let the, let the panels cool down. Tack one piece, make sure it's perfectly flush. Move a bit more, make sure it's flush, and that's when you get a good finish. I'm not really gonna show too much of the tacking it into place as it's quite uh, time consuming and monotonous, but I'll get these tacked in and I will come back to you. So this panel is fully tacked in, as you can see, follows the uh, panel really well and is looking pretty good. On the inside is a little bit more ugly. It was a bit harder to weld. Uh, the material here, like where it is rusted, is not as good of metal to uh, weld onto. As you can see across the bottom was a bit rusty, so it's hard to weld onto. But I have got a nice solid uh, panel now and that is not going anywhere. So next I've got to tackle that inside bit. I don't know whether or not to try and trim fl uh, flush there and then try and basically create an uh, easier square. So I'm going to look at that and get that welded in as well. What I'm also going to do is go ahead and finish off welding this outside panel so that we can kind of start to make a move on patching this all back up and getting it back as it should. So I can show you how we managed to do that because we're probably not going to do that in one piece because we don't have the tools. So for now I'm going to weld that piece on the inside, get that in and weld the outside, get that done and just come back to you when all that is done. So I think that is all the pieces done, ready to start prepping for covering it all up. It does look a bit of a mess. There is a hole in the middle at the back there, but there was a hole here, which I think was for ventilation. So I've just left the hole at the back there ready for it to ventilate. So I've got to tidy up this side here. There's a few wells that are a bit uh, tall, which I got to get rid of. These ones here, I'm not fussed because the panel is basically going to run from here and will come up to here. So you won't uh, actually touch any of this. I have got to get rid of some of these for now. These will all have to be sanded flat. 
but for the time being, I'm just gonna get rid of these ones so I can put the panel in for here. You can do this with a file. We do have the angle grinder, but finding it down would just take so long. So maybe if you are doing these repairs, an angle grinder would be handy as you can pick them up second hand as well, cheap enough. But I'll prep this up a little bit. We are also gonna add some more paint to the inside of this to make sure that what we're covering now is also protected so that rust encapsulator will also be going on these pieces and then i can start to look at patching it all back up and getting it back to its former glory i'm not going to be able to get this in one piece i haven't got the tools for that so i will show you how i'm going to do this in two maybe three pieces so we're finally ready to start to pull this all back up and get it to look back as it should. So I think I'm gonna make this in three separate pieces. I think I'm gonna do one solid piece, which basically covers the whole of this section, the whole of this side, and it will create a curve which goes up here. And then the second piece will be the flat edge, similar to this, and the second piece will just basically carry on up and go on to there, which I might do first. And then the third piece will be the piece that goes inside here and blocks off this side. I may do that central strip first, as that will give me my nice curve. So I'm gonna take some measurements now, cut the material. So I've made a piece for that side, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this side as my template to get the curve. So all I gotta do is place my piece on the bottom pretty much and just bend it into shape of the, uh, the piece. It may take a bit of work, but this material is fairly thin, but as you can see there now, that the the shape is pretty much there. So I just gotta take this to the other side, get into position, and then I can tack this into place. So you would have seen in the time lapse that I started templating this piece. So I Mask and tape the inside, but on the uh, opposite side to give me my uh, template. But you wouldn't really be able to make this piece in one piece without having these slits. So all I did was took the mask and tape, made some cuts so I could lay it flat onto the metal. And then when this is laid out, you get a few slits. When they fold up, they can sit like this. And then this piece will then simply fit into that piece in there. We still got to tidy it all up, but overall it's looking pretty good. So I'll get this tacked into place and then I can move on to the inside. That side should be a lot easier, should be a flat panel, create a bit of a masking template and cut it out and weld it in. But let's get this piece in. So this side is fully welded, as you can see, welded across the top, down the seam there, um, I also drilled out the hole as there's a bolt hole which is for the door. I then drilled up the two sl uh, slits that you could see, they're the ones that I showed earlier on and weld all up the other sides. My welding's not perfect, I am by no means a professional welder, but that does the job. We can sand down the areas we want it to be nice and smooth, again go back and check for any pinholes with a light and then pour any weld over the holes and then sand it down again. But what I gotta do now is look at the inside. Inside should be a little bit easier to cut and template as it should just be a flat panel. But let's crack on with the inside panel. So I finally finished the repair. It does look a bit ugly for now because eventually we're gonna sand all the welds down and make it look tidier, but we're not gonna do that until we start to look on the inside of this truck. If you wanna see the rest of this truck build, make sure to go and drop a subscribe and keep an eye out for our later videos, but let me show you how it looks. So as I said, it does look a little bit ugly, but overall the repair is fairly decent. You can see all the panels there, which we've patched up inside this piece here and on the inside. Unfortunately, all along that edge across the bottom, it was still kind of rusty material, so it wasn't the very best to weld to, but overall, it does the job. But you have to bear in mind the nature of this repair. Yes, we could go and uh, pay someone to do this, but 
that costs a lot of money and for us is a learning curve we want to learn how to repair rust and do body modifications and fabrication so for us this is all part of the learning curve which is probably what you were doing the main purpose of this video is just to show you the reality of starting out as a beginner and the minimalistic tools you need in order to repair a panel for us the main focus on this is structural integrity you can't really see this from uh, when the door is shut and all that so it doesn't really matter to us and we can make this look a lot tidier later down the line also even though that doesn't look the best you have to remember that if we didn't attack that then underneath was a lot worse than it is now so at least it is structurally sound two little tips for maybe to uh, take into your own work and that is inspect the area as much as you can and really decide how you're going to approach the repair whether or not it's structural or cosmetic and that will help you decide how you're going to approach the repair when trimming the material to go in for the new panel just make sure you trim off little bits at a time so you can try and get the panel as close as possible to where it needs to be because that way it doesn't involve any more grinding or anything later on that is necessary also bear in mind that it is going to look and get a lot worse before it starts to look better when we started cutting this out it did look really bad but now it's fairly good and when we start to lay some paint and sand down all these welds it will actually look pretty good and finally as you if you're a beginner welder and you're beginning to fabricate just like us try not to compare yourselves to other people's welds some of these people would have been welding for years on end have the incredible tools that they need to do the job but you and me we may uh, be fairly new to this we have limited tools so try not to compare yourself to some of these professional welders everyone has to start somewhere and this is all part of the learning curve but that is it for today's video hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully we've brought you a bit of understanding of how we approach a rust repair or an area which needs re-welding we have a lot of videos on this truck as i said previously we've put an mx5 rear subframe in this we are putting a, a honda fireblade motorbike engine in which is like three times the power of the standard engine for this so if you want to see how the truck gets on make sure you go and subscribe maybe drop a like as well and if you have any feedback in the comments we're always reading the comments so feel free to drop any feedback but that is it and we will catch you in the next one